Okay, so the last time I tried to record this video, the mic cut out. It didn't work very well. So uh, essentially this is going to be how to get started with the software portion of the NIOS 2 and the Eclipse environment. Uh, let's assume that we have our platform designer. Uh, we already generated the uh, processor, connected the peripherals. We, we, we went to generate. We you know, generated the HDL. Then we went here into our main uh, top file, <laughs> main file, uh, top file, a top Verilog file, and we instantiated a copy of that processor, giving it the clock, the reset, and the buttons, LED switches, uh, mapping them to the board. Let's say we compiled the design already. Uh, we do need to program the device, so let's go ahead and program the device. So, auto detect. S, uh, 5C SEMA 5 in Quick OK. There's going to be two things here on the JTAG chain. The hard processor system we don't have to worry about. We're going to right click on the 5C SEMA 5. We're going to change the file to NIOS2.SOF. Uh, that's the uh, programmer file. So open and uh, make sure your hardware setup is connected to the DESOC. If you need help uh, installing the drivers, uh, I think there's another video out there. Uh, now we're going to click Program and Configure and click Start. So based on that, uh, you should get 100% successful, right? So we're ready to move on. I believe if you're using the light version, it, it, it'll actually have a timeout thing, but I don't think I'm using the light version today. Oh, yep, Standard Edition so I don't have to worry about that. So let's go to Tools, and now we're gonna launch Eclipse. Uh, th this is how we're gonna enter the code for our processor, so NIOS 2 Software Build Tools for Eclipse, or, yeah, okay. Um, I'm gonna make a, a new directory on my desktop just, just cause, so I can delete it afterwards. Uh, name it anything you want, click OK. Okie dokie. So now our project explorer is up. Oops. I'm going to right click uh, in the project explorer, go to new NIOS 2 application and board support package from template. We have to direct it to the SOPC uh, file. So here uh, I'm going to navigate back to my uh, D1 SOC. Uh, template file directory, my first NIOS2.SOPC info, uh, click open, okay so the CPU name is CPU, because let, let's go back here, let's go back to, uh, let's see, NIOS uh, platform designer, So we'll open up the QSIS file, and you'll see we called it CPU. If we had called it something else over here, it would have shown up as something else in NIOS. So my third NIOS, because this is the third time I've done this video, uh, hello world small, and then click finish. Okay. All right, double click on my third NIOS, uh, hello world small. And essentially the hello world is just gonna send, uh, send a message, hello from NIOS 2, uh, to uh, the debug UART. So if everything's connected correctly, we can click debug, click NIOS 2 hardware and click okay. All right, so looks like it's gonna launch the debugger view, which it usually launches when you try to debug. Just wait a second, click OK. Uh, then it comes into debug view, and here is NIOS 2 console window. This is where the hello from NIOS 2 should pop up. That's that US, uh, not USB, that, well, it is USB, but uh, JTAG UART thing that we popped into the 
can see the system comes up or where we're going to use it. So I'm going to click play or resume and it says hello from NIOS 2. So the connection here works. Um, it doesn't always work. Sometimes what happens is it, there's some miscommunication between Eclipse and the other tools. So, so the other thing we have to remember is we're in Platform Designer. If we make any changes, we need to go to Generate, Generate HDL, right? Uh, and then we need to go into Quartus and recompile the design. If you had made some additional inputs or outputs, parallel input outputs, then you'd have additional I.O. over here, which you would need to go and find the instantiation file, copy and paste it in. Right, so make sure that every time you make changes to in uh, Platform Designer to generate HDL again, uh, if the I.O. has changed, go find the instantiation file, copy and paste it into here, and make sure all your ports are connected correctly, and then compile the design, and then launch NIOS, uh, the, the Eclipse tool again. Um, uh, frequently what I'll do or some of my students will do is uh, we'll, we'll make a change in platform designer and then forget to export or we'll, f we'll, we'll compile the design over here and then we'll forget to actually program the device again. So uh, there's a couple tools involved here. Sometimes you'll forget and uh, you'll be wondering why, why is this not working? Well, that, that's why. Um, all right, so, so the basic setup works. Well, let's see here. Let's click here and look at debug configurations. Go to target connections. You should see these two items here. Uh, DESOC on localhost as a processor and byte stream device. Sometimes you might need to ignore mismatch system ID or timestamp, but I don't believe we inserted the system ID here. So system ID, yeah, you'd have a system peripheral ID over here that you could add as well to the system, but we didn't do that this time. So you may need to click these two system ID checks to ignore them. Um, you should see it pop up here. If you don't, uh, I suppose you can try restarting the, the Eclipse environment. So let's go back to the, the regular view and um, but let's do something basic. Uh, let's just use, let's just count up on our LEDs, right? Let's go to the board support package. We're going to go to system.h and maybe it's drivers. I think it's drivers. Uh, oh, yeah, it's drivers. Altera Avalon PIO regs.h. That file is needed as well. This one tells you, uh, right here is a function call. If I wanted to write to the, one of the PIOs, the LEDs or the, well, uh, buttons, you can't write to the buttons, but uh, IO read, IO write are two functions that you'll want to use. IO read, IO write can, you know, uh, read from buttons, write to LEDs, uh, except for the fact that this is a generic function. We need to go to system.h, which if we go back to platform builder, we'll see, uh, there's an address, right? There's an address on each device that we added to the system. Uh, remember when we, we were assigning base address, right? So we assigned base addresses in the hardware, we compiled it, we generated the system. Now we come into system.h, it'll generate uh, some information here that you'll probably want to use, like uh, it'll tell you the LED addresses. LED base is the LED base address. Uh, something like uh, seven segment base address, or something like switch base address. Okay, so those that information is in the system.h file. And here is a function call that you'll use to read or write to the to the IO. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and kind of do uh, we're gonna write to the LED, so we're gonna need this function, right? Base comma data base comma data, paste that in. We're gonna read, or we're gonna write to, not the base, but we're gonna write to uh, LED base. LED base comma data, what are we gonna write? Um, just to start, let's just write hex FF to turn it on, okay? Control save, let's see, right quick, build project, 
And it doesn't like it. Why doesn't it like it? Well, we, let's see, problems, errors, LED base undeclared. It was declared in system.h. Include system.h. Let's see whether it goes away. Okay. Uh, undefined reference to that function. We also need to include Altera Avalon PIO regs.h. Build project. Okay, so it'll build. Um, so let's see, let's debug and see whether the LEDs come on. So I'll click play and let's see whether the LEDs come on. All right, LEDs come on over here, so that's a good sign. Let's go back and modify some more. Let's call this a char uh, value equals zero value over here. Uh, we're going to write value to LED base address. And uh, this process is going to be running really fast. At, I believe the internal clock is 50 megahertz that's coming in, feeding into uh, over here. Yeah, it's a 50 clock. I'm not sure if it does any. I don't think it does anything internally because we didn't configure it uh, POL or anything. So let's see. Now what are we going to do? We need a delay to slow it down. So int delay equals zero. Then we're going to do while delay less than two million delay plus plus. Uh, set delay back to zero every time. Well, delays not two million, then we're going to increment. Then we're going to do a, what is it? Let's call it count. Count equals zero. Uh, then we're going to do count. <laughs> count arrow equals. Uh, count equals count plus one. Okay, this is not Verilog. Uh, okay, count is count plus one. Well, that should delay enough, and then we'll increment the count each time forever. Uh, so remember, we need to add, that was by default. We need to add the system.h so that we have the LED base address, and then we need to add the Altera Avalon PIO regs so we had access to the function. We should be able to uh, build project, and then I'll try debugging see whether it actually counts up. All right, so we'll launch it and it looks like it's counting up on the LEDs. So that's a good sign. Okay, so that's counting. Uh, it's essentially it. Um, if you want to add more stuff, uh, use the write, uh, write function, read function. Uh, I guess you're on your own now. Uh, this is kind of where I kind of let my students do the rest of uh, the lab themselves. So uh, yeah, that's, that's the uh, NIOS 2 software portion for you. Remember, occasionally Eclipse will get stuck. Uh, best best thing to do is if you ever run into an issue where the board doesn't want to talk turn the board off and on again and then uh, relaunch Eclipse as well and remember uh, that you need to actually make sure that once you, you make a change over here you need to generate the HDL again in platform builder then you need to go co compile the design and program the board so don't forget those steps uh, remember that if you change anything in your platform designer that changes the I.O., you'll need to go to the, the instantiation file, 
copy the instantiation uh, example over to this to instantiate your processor, recompile, and then reprogram. And uh, since this is YouTube, uh, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.